Getting balance in your photographs can be challenging, but this is the surefire way to make your photographs stand out. You know those photographs that just seem to work, but you don't know why? These probably have a sense of balance to them. Balance is basically when you compose your photograph in such a way to make it stable and aesthetically pleasing. Without balance, your photographs can easily become chaotic. The viewer's eye might go somewhere completely different to where you want them to look, or they might erratically look around the photograph not having anything to focus on. On the other hand, if you take a colour, a dominant object or a brighter part of that scene and place it at a certain point within your photograph, this can help balance out that photograph. And this shows that you're photographing with intention. For those of you that are new here, this is a 10-part series on the most important part of photography, and that's composition. I've already covered symmetry, visual hierarchy and patterns, and there's plenty more to come. I'll link it in the description. Composition is all about where you stand, and moving a few millimetres one way or the other could make all of the difference between a great composition and a bad one. So you do need to be really patient when you get to a new location. Take the time to find the balanced composition, and this will make it really work. You might find a great leading line or a nice pattern, but if you don't get balance in your photograph, it can still feel off. Now in the symmetry video in this series, I did talk about getting into the right position. And it's amazing how you can be out ever so slightly and the shot just feels off. And this has a lot to do with balance. Now a symmetrical shot is the most straightforward and easiest way to get a balanced shot. So let's start there. In a symmetrical composition, one half is very similar to the other, which creates balance. Whilst not all balanced photographs have symmetry, all symmetrical photographs have balance. This is why photographs that have the subject bang in the middle of the frame seem to work. However, a lot of the time this is just a little too obvious, and it's very much a trait of a beginner photographer. But don't worry if you do this because it's a necessary step to get to where you want to be. And let's be honest, sometimes a lot of advanced photographers still do this. I do it, but I have a few subtle differences to make it stand out a little bit more. Or at least in my mind they do anyway. Having a horizontal or a vertical split gives balance to either side of that central line. An example of a vertical split would be a city street, whereas an example of a horizontal split would be a reflection. And if you want to learn more about symmetry, click on the eye in the corner or the link in the description. When it comes to landscape photography, finding balance in asymmetrical scenes is so important, as most of the scenes that you'll end up shooting won't be symmetrical. And once you get this, it'll help you become a much more advanced photographer. Following the rule of thirds is a way of creating an asymmetrical shot. You place your main subject to one side or the other of the frame on one of the vertical lines in the thirds grid. However, to get some balance in your frame, you do need to find something to place on the other side. It doesn't have to be the same thing and it doesn't have to be the same size, but to get true balance, it has to hold the same weight. Now you don't have to do this, but it will give your shot more balance. If you look at this shot, it's an imbalanced photograph. The staircase up the side of the volcano heavily weights the right hand side of the frame. Now I do like this image, so it does show that imbalanced shots can work. On the other hand, this is an interesting shot, but I think it's way too chaotic. There's a lot going on in the photo, especially on the right hand side, so it's heavily weighted to the right. People also carry a lot of weight in a photograph. In this shot, there isn't much going on, and the people really draw your attention. And you can really use this to your advantage. In this shot, the peak of the volcano weighs to the left-hand side of the frame, but the two tiny figures balance this out. I love this shot as it shows the scale of this place, even though those people are only a few pixels in the frame. The brightest part of a scene can also hold a lot of weight. In this shot, the sun was setting over the viewpoint and the brightness draws the eye, but the unique shapes of the mountains to the left balances this out. If you're interested in trying this out in your photography, start by working out what your main subject is, then place it to one side or the other in your frame. Then look to see how other elements in your frame might hold a similar amount of weight. I'll sometimes wait for either a person or something to get into a certain position within my frame, and then I'll take that photograph. Sometimes this means a lot of waiting around, and other times it happens quite quickly. But you do have to be patient, and you do have to start thinking on your feet. Different colours can help you get balance in your frame as well. If you have brighter colours in your shot, these tend to attract the viewer's attention, giving it a little bit more weight. 
so as well as physical objects, you can use colors such as reds, yellows, and oranges. Let's say you've got a big dominant mountain on one side of your frame. If you have something that has a bright color but is a lot smaller, you can put that on the other side of the frame and it will balance out that frame. If these paragliders had very bland colored canopies, they'd blend in a little. But with the brighter colors, they do stand out more and hold a lot of visual weight. And in this shot, even though the hot air balloons are small, they really stand out because of those colors giving them again a lot of visual weight. They actually dominate this shot, and if both of them were on one side, it would upset the balance. Now this isn't a great shot, but it does highlight how much they grab your attention, and this has a lot to do with the color. Now those last frames are quite blatant, but balance can be a lot more subtle. In this frame, to me, the waterfall is balanced out by the big rocks in the foreground to the left. If I'd have left these out, the shot would have been overly weighted to the right but these rocks just give a little bit of balance to this composition. With this shot, the sheet balances out the mountains in the background, and I gave it a bit more weight by blurring that background out a little as well. As well as being a familiar shape, the sheep is using brightness to stand out from the background. And you can really see this if you take all of the color out of the frame. This is basically using tonality to give that side of the photograph more weight. So if you have a big dark mountain on one side of your frame, is there something bright you can put on the other side of the frame? Going back to colors, inevitably some are brighter than others. So tonality and bright colors work in conjunction to give that part of the photograph much more weight. Now this brings us to the more artistic side of photography, which is conceptual balance. A photograph that's balanced to one person might not appeal to another. And this is the great thing with photography. It's so unique and so individual to you as a photographer. Now this conceptual balance could be the juxtaposition of two completely different elements, the differences in sizes between two elements, or a tiny person juxtaposed in a massive landscape. And it's also the hardest one to put into words. Learning this just comes with putting time behind the camera, going through different techniques and learning them, and just having experiences out in the wild with your camera taking photographs. It's the best way to get better. And what you'll find is you'll start to take shots that you really like, and they'll just work, and you don't know why. And sometimes this is the culprit. Textures and patterns can also hold a lot of weight, and these can help with balancing out your photographs. With this photograph, it's using a lot of different elements, but the one thing I want you to focus on is the cloud in the top left-hand corner. Without this, the figure at the end of the path would weight it a little too much to the right. So in putting this textured bit of sky in the left-hand corner, this has balanced out the top of the frame. Now this was an intentional decision I made at the time. Instead of shooting closer and cutting it off or leaving it out altogether, in fact, I remember getting my wife to do quite a few different poses while that cloud drifted through the sky until it got to that corner. With this next photograph, it would be completely weighted to the bottom left with the people walking. But then the pattern pulls your eye up to the top of the frame and then you notice the mountains in the background. So this shows how patterns can help draw the viewer's eye through the frame. To put this into practice, if you find something that you want to photograph, try and work out what the main subject of that scene is going to be. Then put it in different places in your frame. Now, if you're not sure what the main subject is in your frame, there is something that you can do that will tell you this very quickly, but you do need a mirrorless camera with a viewfinder. What you want to do is take a photograph, and then preview that photograph in your EVF. So press your preview button and then bring it up to your eye. The first thing that your eye goes to is the first thing that's grabbed your attention. And if it's grabbed your attention, it'll grab your viewer's attention. It's one thing looking at the photograph on the back of your camera, but you've got all of these distractions around your camera. Whereas when you bring the EVF up to your eye, that blocks everything out and it just gives you the photograph. Once you've done this, look at that whole scene again and see if there's anything that you can add or take away from the photograph to make it better and to make it a more balanced photograph. Once you do start to get more balance in your frame, it'll seem more settled and the photograph will just start to work. I do this a lot. And if I'm not sure how to compose the shot, it really does help. 
Now, the next time you're out, if you're struggling with this, start by looking for something symmetrical. This will give you a balanced photograph and then start to try and take it to another level. Once you've found a subject, place it in different parts of your frame and see if there are other things that you can put in that photograph that will back up that subject almost as a supporting role. Now, there is one tool that will really help you with this, and I know some of you will cringe, but it's the rule of thirds grid. If you're a beginner, this is fantastic because it gives you points of reference to put those objects. And once you get used to it, you can turn it off but it is a really good guide. When you do get the hang of this, this will show that you're photographing with intention. And that's what we all want to achieve. Nice, intentful photographs that stand out.